Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to the third video of this series, where we are building a task manager application from scratch using the mean stack. In the previous tutorial, we created the front end for this task manager in Angular. So now we have to create the API that will handle all of the data for this application. All right, guys, we're going to be focusing on the API parts of this application now. So let's go to the API folder that we created before. And in here, we can we can now open this folder in the terminal and we can now run npm init and let's keep the defaults for this. So let's just press enter. Okay. And now let's open this up in a text editor. We can now create a file called app.js. We now want to install express. So let's go to the terminal and type in npm install express <clears throat> save there we go all right so now that's been installed we can now load it into our app there we go and app is equal to express there we go and we can now make it listen on port 3000 and we have a callback here and we can just log something to the console uh, server is listening on port 3000 there we go and we can now create a test route so we can do app.get slash request and response in the callback and then do response.send hello world there we go uh, so we can now start this application using nodemon so nodemon app.js now that's running and we can now use postman to test our application okay so localhost 3000 send and we get hello world great so we've just done a get request to localhost 3000 and we've gotten back hello world as the response which is great so it's now working so we can now start creating the root handlers for the list roots. So here we can put in uh, root handlers. Okay, uh, so slash lists. And then we can just type in a comment here of what we want to do. So we want to return, we want to return an array of all the lists in the database okay so we have that and let's just add a comment here so uh, get slash lists purpose of this route is to get all lists there we go and now let's do the same thing uh, with post slash lists And here we want to create a new list and return the new list document back to the user, which includes the ID. Okay, so that's what we want to do. And we can add a comment here. Post slash lists. The purpose of this route is to create a list. There we go. And also we should make a note of the fact that the list information fields will, will be passed in via the JSON request body. And let's do one for um, patch, which will be for updating a list, slash lists. And here we want to update, actually here we will have the ID of the list. We want to update um, the specified list with the new values specified in the JSON, okay, of the request. And let's do the same thing here. Let's create 
a comment and uh, purpose is to update a specified list okay and the final one is the delete so we can do app dot delete um, slash lists slash ID request response and here we want to delete the specified list all right so that's all done we uh, we have our outline of our root handlers that we will need so now we actually have to create our database and our data models so that we can start using and querying this database in our root handlers so let's create a folder called db and let's create a file in there called mongoose.js which will handle so this file will handle mongodb um, will handle connection logic to mongodb to the mongodb database okay so we first want to install mongoose so we will do that now let's install mongoose and then we can use it in this file here so we can require mongoose there we go and we then want to set mongoose.promise equal to global.promise purely because mongoose is currently using bluebird for their promises uh, so we are setting it to use the global javascript promise instead and we then want to connect so mongoose.connect and we want to put in the uri here so mongodb localhost 27017 which is the default port that mongodb runs on and then slash the name of our database which we'll call task manager there we go and we're going to add an option here use new url parser set that to true and we can then do dot then and just do a console.log here there we go and we can do a dot catch here as well dot catch console.log There we go. Okay, so we've got that, and now we want to, um, and now we just want to set some properties to prevent some deprecation warnings. It's not really a big deal. It's just what we need to do to prevent deprecation warnings. And we then want to export the mongoose object. So there we go. So save that, and that's done. And now create a folder called models in DB where we will create our mongoose models so the first model we'll create is the list model okay so const mongoose equal to require mongoose okay so let's create the schema so const list schema is equal to new mongoose dot schema and we have the schema definition here where we will define the fields that this schema will have so title which will be of type string it is going to be required the minimum length will be one and trim true so that the white space at both ends of the string are trimmed away and that's it for the list okay so now let's create the model 
list is equal to mongoose.model with the name of list, um, list schema. There we go. And we can do module.exports is equal to list. There we go. That's how you make a model for mongoose. And we can then create the task model, task.model.js. And it will be pretty much the same thing. So I'm gonna so I'm going to copy and paste this code here and just change it up a little bit. So we can change these to task schema. And we can change the list to task. There we go. And the title will stay the same. And we're going to add a list ID field, which will be of type mongoose dot types object ID and required is true so that we will be able to know which list this task belongs to. Okay, so that's the models done. And now we can go to the app and we can load in these models. So let's load in the mongoose models. All right, so const list is equal to require db slash models slash list and for task we will do the same thing there we go to make this a bit easier we could actually create an index.js file in the models folder we can use this file to combine all of the models so that it's easier to import them from other files. If we import here a list equal to require list.model and do the same thing with task and then we can do module.exports is equal to list and task and now in app.js, we don't need two statements to import, we just need one. So we can do list task is equal to require db slash models. And that's it. There we go. Okay. So now we can actually query our database. So to get all lists, we can do list.find. And uh, here we have the conditions of this query, but we want to find all of the lists. So we can leave this condition empty and then do dot then. And um, the lists will be returned. And then we can do response dot send lists. It's as simple as that. That's all we have to do. Um, for post lists, we want to create a list. All right, so to create a new list, we want to first get the list information that was passed in in the JSON request body. So to do this, we need to do let title equal to request.body.title. But to do this, we need to use some express middleware called body parser. So let's first install that. And once we've installed body parser, we can go to the top and import that. Const body parser equal to require. Okay, there we go. So, and then we can load middleware. There we go. So that middleware will pass the request body of the HTTP request. So now we can do things like request.body.title to get the title that was passed in. And we can now uh, create the new list. And here we need to put an object with the fields, which we just have title. So we can just leave as title. And then we can do new list.save. Uh, dot then and then within the callback uh, it will return the list document 
So um, the full list document is returned. And then we can do response.send list document. There we go. And that's how we do that. So now we have enough code here to test. But before we test this API, we first have to import this mongoose.js file so that when we launch the application, it's able to connect to the MongoDB database. So let's at the top here, let's do const mongoose is equal to require db slash mongoose. There you go, save that. And we now get this console log here connected to MongoDB successfully. So we know that it's connected and we can now go to Postman to test our API. So let's do get locals 3000 slash lists, send that request and we get an empty array. And that is great because we haven't actually created any lists yet. Okay, so let's now do a post request. So post, post localhost 3000 slash lists and in the body we'll um, go to JSON and we'll send a JSON body uh, with title and we'll say hello world. Okay, so now let's send this and we get back the document that was created. So the document has been created successfully in the MongoDB database, which is great. And we now have this document with the ID and everything. Okay, so now let's go back to the get request and let's see if the result contains this newly created list. So let's send this request and we now get an array which has the newly created list in it, which is great. So we have two root handlers which now work properly. So now let's work on the updating. All right, and so we can now write the query to update a list. So to update, we can do list dot find one and update. We first have to put in the conditions uh, and we'll put in the ID will be the request dot params dot ID dot ID. And we will then put the update statements. And here we will use a MongoDB keyword, you could say, uh, called set. And it will set request dot body. What this is saying is it will update the list that it finds using this condition here with the contents of the request.body object, which is what the caller is providing us with when they send the request. Okay, so then we can do dot then. And here we can just do response.send status 200. And we are doing this because we don't need to send back the updated document because the caller already knows what the updated fields are because they provided us with them. So there's no need to send back the document. So we will just be sending back a status 200 OK message to say that the update went through. OK, so that's that done. We can now see if this works by going to Postman and we can do a patch request. Uh, localhost. 3000 slash lists and then slash and here we have to put an ID so we can go to the get request and find the ID of this document here and copy that and paste it here and in the body we can set it to JSON and we can then uh, change the title so we can now enter the new title value so this is a new title and now we can send this request and see what happens. 200 OK. So that means that it should have gone through. So now we can go to the get request and we can press send and see if this title has been updated. Yep, there we go. So now we have an updated title. We can now change the value of fields in our list document, which is great. OK, so now let's go into the final one, which is delete. So we want to delete this specified list. So here we can do list dot find one and remove. And we're first going to pass in the conditions, which will be the ID request dot params dot ID. That's the condition. And then 
we do dot then and it will return the removed list document and here we can do response.send removed list document okay so let's see if this works so let's save this and go to postman and let's create a new tab here go to um, delete localhost 3000 slash lists slash and now an ID and now let's go to this ID here copy and paste it and let's press send and see what happens okay so we get back the document so that's a good sign um, now if we go to the get request and we run it we should get back an empty array so let's see what happens so there we go we get an empty array so that means it's working we have successfully deleted a document from the database which is great okay so we have all of the data operations finished for the lists all right so now we want to create the routes for the tasks we're going to do app.get slash lists slash list list id slash tasks the reason that we're doing this is so that we can get all of the tasks in a specific list we'll get the request and response objects there we go and here what we want to do is we want to return all tasks that belong to a specific list let's do a comment here as well So to do this, what we can do is we can do task dot find and in the conditions, we can put the list ID, which will be um, request dot params dot list ID. There we go. And that would be it. And then we can do dot then the tasks will be sent back. So we can do response dot send tasks that's it okay now let's do the same with post slash lists slash list id slash tasks request response and here we want to create a new list a new task in the list specified by list id okay so post slash lists slash list ID slash tasks. Okay, we can create a new task. So let new task equal to new task. And we can put the document in here. And we can set the title of this task to request.body.title. There we go. And now we can save this task. So new task dot save dot then. Uh, the new task document will be sent back and now we can do response dot send new task doc so we can now test this by going to postman and creating a post request post localhost 3000 slash lists and now we have to put a list id but we don't have any lists um, in our database so we have to create one using a post request to slash lists so let's create a new list and we'll call this test list and send this request and we get back this ID here if we copy this now and go to the post request slash lists slash then paste the ID in here and now do slash tasks and now we can go to the body set raw and JSON and now we can put the title of the task here so I can say this is a new task in the test list okay so now we can send this request and we're getting an error so uh, the list ID is required oh oh yes okay so we've got to put in the list ID here so here we can put in the list ID uh, which would be request.params.listid sorry about that I forgot that 
Okay, so now we can go back to Postman, try that again, send the request. And there we go, so now we get the new task with the title and list ID. So we've successfully created this task. Now we can try the get request and see if we're able to retrieve this task. So let's create a new request, uh, get localhost 3000 slash lists uh, slash, slash this ID here slash tasks. And now we should be able to get this newly created task back. So let's send it. And there we go. Now we have the same exact task come up here in the array of tasks that was sent back. Great. So these two root handlers are working completely fine, which is great. So now we can create the update root. So let's create a patch root for slash lists slash list ID slash tasks slash task ID. We will be needing the task ID for this um, root handler. So we will be including it in the URL. So we're going to get slash lists slash list ID slash tasks slash task ID. Okay. Now we get the uh, request and response parameters. And now we can create the code for this. So we want to update an existing task specified by task ID. There we go. And we can just write a quick note here. There we go. So now we can write the code. So for this, we can do task dot find one and update like we did before with the list. Uh, where is it here? We did find one and update passed in the ID and we then use the set keyword here to set the request dot body fields to the document in the database. So we can do the exact same thing here. So we can put the conditions in here and the conditions will be that the ID will be the request dot params dot task ID and also that the list ID will be request dot params dot list ID. As usual, we are getting these from the request parameters, which are in the URL here. Okay. And now we can put the update statement and we'll be using the set keyword and we'll be doing the same things before by passing in request dot body. And now we can do dot then, and we're just going to send back a status 200. There we go. And that's pretty much it. Now let's try and test this in Postman. So if we go to patch localhost 3000 slash lists, let's get uh, the ID of the list here. So slash the list ID slash tasks. And now let's get the task ID of this one here. Copy that and paste that in here. And let's go to the body uh, raw JSON and let's update the title. So let's set the title to this is an updated title. And the original title, as we can see here, is this title here. So let's see if it changes. So let's send this request here. And we get a status 200 OK, which is good. Now let's just confirm that that's been updated by doing a GET request. So let's resend this GET request here and see if this value changes. There we go. We now have this is an updated title come up, which is great. Cool. OK, so that one's done. Now let's create the delete route. So let's quickly write the comment here, which will be delete slash lists slash list ID slash tasks slash task ID. And the purpose of this will be delete a task. And here we can do app dot delete slash lists slash I slash list ID slash tasks slash task ID. We get the request and response parameters here. 
And here we can do the same thing as we did with the delete list root here, uh, which is do find one and remove, and then just do this sort of code here where we um, pass in the conditions and then it will send back the removed document. So if we go and do that, we can now do task dot find one and remove and we'll pass in the conditions, uh, which will be the ID being request.params.task ID and the list ID also, which is going to be request.params.list ID. There we go. And as usual, we are getting these from the URL here. Okay, and now we can do dot then. And this will uh, send us the removed uh, task document, task doc. And here we can do response dot send removed task document. There we go. We can save this now and we can go to Postman and test this out. So let's go and create a new request with the delete method and do localhost 3000 slash lists slash and then we can get the the list ID and the task ID from this previous request and just uh, paste that in. There we go. And we can now press send. Okay, it's looking good. We now get the returned document, which is good. Now to test this out, we can go to the get request and we can send this and see if we get an empty array because it should send back an empty array now. So press send and we now get an empty array. So that's working, which is great. Okay, so that's pretty much it. But there is one more thing I want to do. Right now, we can only get all of the tasks from a list using this get request here. Let's say we wanted to have a root that uh, provided a task ID and a list ID would return the task um, with that task ID in that list. How could we do that? We can just do app.get slash lists slash list ID slash tasks slash task ID get the request and response objects and then do task dot find one find one because we only want one uh, pass in the conditions which would be um, the ID being request dot params dot task ID and the list ID being request dot params dot list ID Okay, and then we can do dot then response dot send. We will uh, get the task here. So the task will be returned and we can now send this task. Okay, save that and let's test if this works. So we don't have any tasks in our database at the moment, but we can go to the post request and we can create it. So let's just uh, resend this request that we made. So if we send this now, there you go, we've created this new task. So let's get the ID from here. And let's go and go to the get request here, the one that we had before, that would get all of the tasks. And let's just simply change it so that we have slash tasks slash, and then paste in the ID. And we can now press send and uh, hopefully we will get the document uh, returned back. There we go, so now we have the document for just one task specified by the task ID in the URL. So we won't be needing this functionality for this application, but it's useful for you to know how to do this as it's very likely it will come up in your own projects where you'd like to send a request to your API to get the document of just one item specified by the ID. That's very useful to know, but we won't be needing it in this tutorial. So I'm going to remove it because we won't be needing this functionality. Okay, so that's all done. We've successfully created the API. So now we can go back to developing the front end.